the avdoot avtar doctrine the difference between an avtar and an avdoot is that the avtar is the involution of divine into the human and the avdoot is the evolution of the human into the divine it's all wonderful and great what would you what would you want me to say <clears throat> about her i've already said what i have about her in my book wings to freedom i have mentioned my experiences with uh, mahanandi mai ma of course let me tell you one thing before i begin uh i am a simple teacher i'm not used to flattery i speak english i don't know the american ways sometimes they may like it sugar coated but uh, in the in my book i have called anandi mai ma as per in my opinion the only avatar of the century she is the only avatar of the century but common people people around they say so and so is an avatar then there's a durga mata and that so i honor and respect them all maybe i'm not worthy enough to realize that they are avatars let's put the blame on ourselves but i did realize that anandi mai ma was an avatar and because i saw that on occasion she cast no shadow the other ladies who have seen who claim to be avatars or who are maybe may not be they cast a shadow and the experience i had with her that when i was touching her feet my uh my hands went through her feet there was no flesh no bone now if any of the avatars or whoever you deem to be avatars can demonstrate that then sure there are sure signs of an avatar people have not studied the doctrine of the avatars i think in my book i will also for your benefit given the avdhut avatar doctrine who's read the avdhut avatar doctrine okay so now in this i try to clarify as much as possible <clears throat> uh the subtle distinctions between an avdhut and avatar and the distinctions are very fine everyone is great it's an evolutionary process according to my realization she was in every sense an avatar and i have never seen anybody go into nirvikalp samadhi with such ease as anandi mai ma did as a matter of fact that can be told by the bhav that she is in in my book i have given two photographs of her right who has seen the both the photographs now there is a difference between the two photographs and the states of samadhi one is a bhav samadhi and one is nirvikalp samadhi i did not find it necessary to to clarify that as i left that to the for the reader to uh, <clears throat> you know go ahead and uh, make their own uh, realizations not judgments but their own intuitions about that and it is not so easy and the other person is to go to nirvikalp samadhi but was very scientifically trained by sri yukteswar is great guru how many of you have heard of sri yukteswar it appears you haven't because when i speak of sri yukteswar i will always speak of parmans yogananda as his boy i i you understand english as his child you understand i but when i speak of yogananda alone he is a beloved a great being a divine soul and a great master you understand I so this is how we do it in english so when the father is there then we can take liberties to speak about the son and yogananda was the spiritual son at his at any time he used to go to nirvikal samadhi and he demonstrated this in life and death the only guru who came here, of course vivekananda came here he had a different message he demonstrated the only guru who demonstrated this in life and death was parmans yogananda some people uh, in america have started saying things about yogananda which i have refuted and i have told them look if you can die and keep your body in a deathless state of radiant light 21 days or one month later like yogananda did then talk otherwise shut up <laughs> <laughs> have i made myself clear Aye. so there are people who talk because this book came so he was very closely related 
with Anandimaya Maa spiritually. There's a photo of them together. You all know about that. Uh, he, his was the most difficult task because he was one of the people who came upon the Christian world in America. And when he came upon the Christian world in America, he had to introduce the science of Kriya Yoga very sensitively and very carefully, which led to his softening the techniques of Kriya Yoga. I wouldn't say diluting, I would say softening the techniques. So, I hope you appreciate this fact that the techniques coming directly from the Himalayas would be a li little different in the intensity than the techniques you have got through the Self-Realization Fellowship here. Which was the difficult task. Firstly, Yogananda had to soften the techniques because people couldn't sit in lotus posture, they couldn't sit in the Indian style. So he had to start from the anatomy by giving them uh, bone softening exercises where they could sit in a happy sitting position. Then secondly, he had to come up against uh, an ideology of Christianity which he introduced very gracefully uh, calling Babaji the Christ, Yogi Christ of the modern world. But if you ask me today, I would say, no, Babaji is not the Yogi Christ of the modern world. Babaji is the Christos, the Yogi Christos of the modern world, the Vas, the, the soul essence. Everyone has this eye of self. And this you will, you will know, I don't want to argue or discuss this. When you meditate, you will know who this lightning standing still is, who is the nameless one. She was the bliss permeated mother. I had the good fortune to meet her on many occasions and had many sweet memories in the aura of this divine being. One rainy afternoon, I left home in haste. I was homesick and I wanted to be absorbed in her presence. On reaching her ashram in Pune, I found the door to her room closed. I did not want to disturb her, but stood in the rain, my eyes transfixed on the door as if I would stare it open. It did open, but only after I had practiced rain yoga for twenty minutes or so, a mild tapa to wash away some negative karma before meeting with the Divine, I thought to myself. She smiled and called me indoors, saying, I was a stubborn child, and so I was. Before I sat, I proceeded to touch her feet, which she normally does not permit. But as I touched her feet, I was shocked to find my hands go through her bones and flesh to touch the floor. My body was electrified at that. I remembered that an avatar is an illusion of light in the illusion of the world. It can at will to increase a person's faith, make one experience his or her body of light. No flesh, no shadow, no karma. How can a nobody have any karma? An avataric being is karmaless when it does work in maya. It leaves no sanskars. It's like writing on water. When the unliberated student does his daily chores or work, he creates karma. It's like writing on the sand. Uplifted and wonderstruck by this experience, I settled in a trance-like state and saw her radiance flooding the whole ashram and the countryside. As my body elongated, my consciousness left it to expand and merge in her wondrous aura. I was blessed, and when I opened my eyes, the surroundings were still radiant with her presence. An hour later she said, You are your own Guru. Go and spread the word of the Lord in far lands. And she went into Samadhi again. In all my travels and spiritual experiences, in all my meditations, and direct experiences, the realization that has dawned on me is that Anandamai Ma is the only woman avatar of the century. She is often loosely 
and wrongly equated with popular modern women saints, yoga teachers or others of similar names. We are blessed to have such divine avatars with us, without whom pure spirituality would have vanished from the face of this earth long ago. Mm-hmm.